All right. I guess my guest tonight is a YouTuber, entrepreneur, activist. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that part. She's known for her bubbly personality and straightforward talk. Her YouTube channel focuses on living a modern, holistic, not whole, <laughs> holistic lifestyle, <laughs> which is exploring and expanding your mind, body, soul, and in unconventional ways. And she's here today in the peak right now. Leela. Hello. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. Hi. Hey, we are excited for you to be here. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm feeling good. I actually just finished teaching about uh, 30 minutes ago. So my brain has already been going. So I'm ready for you, Finch. Ah, you sure you're ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm excited. I always have a good time talking to you. So this is going to be fun. You know, people come on here and they say they're ready, but they have no oh, idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea the type of heat I bring on this show. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. No worries. I appreciate that. So we're talking emotional intelligence. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody might say, who is this young girl? How is she qualified to talk about emotional intelligence? Is she talking about it because of her bad relationships? Where's it coming from? You know, what is she talking about? She's probably one of those people that like to project stuff that not mm. true, but that's part of her experiences. And so now she's become an expert because everybody's a coach or an expert. So let's talk about why this subject matter is so dear to your heart and what makes you qualified to talk about it. Yeah, well, I wouldn't call myself an expert. That's kind of having so, enough self-awareness to recognize what you are and what you're not. But I am working on my PhD at Virginia Tech, and I look at entrepreneurs' personalities and behaviors and how that influences investors' decision-making. So from that yeah. perspective, um, I've done a lot of research related to um, entrepreneurs and emotional intelligence is part of that, as well as leaders. So that's kind of like my academic background. And then I think I I think I can say I have high emotional intelligence based on what people have told me and my personal experiences, which I'm sure we'll get into as far as personal work, um, even the new app Clubhouse. And that's kind of what mm. this idea about emotional intelligence and how it's so important, more important than any other type of intelligence, which is like cognitive intelligence, you know, which is like IQ and stuff. True that. So, so when you when you think about emotional intelligence, how would you define it? Okay, well, I'll define it the way most do, which is the ability to um, recognize others' emotions as well as your own, and having mm -hmm. the capacity to self-regulate, so to control your reactions to others and the situation. And so that that's kind of in a nutshell what it's about. It's about having that social awareness and acuteness mm -hmm. of what's going on, reading the room as well right. as being able to control yourself, right? And that's like happy feelings as well as anger and being able mm -hmm. to regulate that accordingly. So that's what emotional intelligence is pretty much about. And there's a different yeah. aspect like empathy and other things, but yeah. Yeah, and I think that's part of the, that's part of, I think, uh, a number of people's problems in identify that they're not self-aware. And mm -hmm. when you're not self-aware, you're definitely not gonna self-regulate. Um, because right. in your world, in your mind, the problem is everybody else. But you. <laughs> yeah. And so you will find a way uh, I, I found in dealing with people who are not emotionally intelligent. And listen, guys, I think where you are in life, no matter your age, it, it's rightfully so for you to understand that you are not so that you can fix it. It's not like, oh, if you're not today, you can't be that tomorrow. Yeah, but you got to be aware that you're not. And then you got to do something about that so that you can mature. That's a whole that's the whole object of being emotionally intelligent. It's not about your book knowledge. It's not about, oh, well, I got a PhD. Well, you still don't have any control over how you feel. And then you're not aware of how other people feel. And so you're not empathetic when it comes to people dealing with certain things and so again i have found when a person is not emotionally intelligent that affects not only their personal life but it also affects more so importantly their relationships and which is why they can't stay in one even when mm -hmm. they meet people that are good for them right mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's a part of it you know so so just to kind of take a step back some of like the foundational aspects of someone having high emotional intelligence or low emotional intelligence has a lot to do with self-confidence, mm -hmm. right? Because 
self-confidence and also say past experiences, right? So right. if you have self-confidence, if someone says something to you, um, you'll be able to receive that feedback constructively, right? Without being reactive to having anger or being defensive, right? So right. sometimes when you, when you get into a relationship, you know, from my observation of people who have struggled with this, whether it's past relationship issues regarding trust or what, or maybe like in their childhood, they've had, you know, any situation, they're triggered a little bit more easily than others if it was like a regular situation. Um, and so it goes down to like their self-confidence of being able to like have dialogue, being able to understand like you can be wrong, like being aware that, okay, I don't know everything. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care how much experience you have. And I will tell you with my academic hat, okay, listen closely, <laughs> is that they did a study, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna give these gems to your people. Uh, they did a study um, and they, they did a study with a lot of leaders in the corporate America. And they found that controlling like IQ and experience, that emotional intelligence was like the number one factor that really influenced leaders' effectiveness, mm -hmm. right? Regarding, you know, coordination and communication. And so that translates into romantic relationships. Communication is a huge part. Language, tone, expression. You know, mm -hmm. it could be like, Vince, you hurt my feelings, or Vince, you hurt my feelings, right? So even mm -hmm. the inflection and like what I'm saying, you could be received differently. And so having that awareness of like what you're saying, how you're saying it, and how it could be perceived before you say it. And so emotional intelligence could be like, think before you do is like a kind of quick and dirty way of like breaking it down too. Now you brought up hurting feelings as, as an example. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, ask a question based upon that. Okay. Um, do would you say that that is a, a clear indication of someone who may not be as emotionally intelligent as they may have thought when they're looking at someone as, hey, you hurt my feelings versus their feelings being hurt is not caused by the person, but some something that they said it did was a trigger on something they haven't dealt with internally. Well, it could be a couple of things. One, it's always suggested not to having high emotional intelligence when you communicate to someone, Finch, you hurt my feelings, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of like very, uh, uh, you know, associating the person with whatever that situation was, right? So like, oh, those those words, you know, hurt my feelings or like that situation, right? Focus on the problem, the mm -hmm. concept, the situation, but don't associate that with this person, right? And right. that's just romantic, but even friendships, even, you know, people, when we talk about races, we talk about all sorts of different concepts. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanna seek a, a level of understanding, you can't attack someone, right? Because naturally we are going to be defensive. But mm. on the other hand, if someone is receiving information, whether it was done properly or not, you also have to have emotional intelligence. Like, okay, like I get attacked all the time and I don't get triggered because I'm like, I have empathy. I'm like, okay, this person's hurting. This, there's mm. nothing wrong with this person, right? That's demonstrating my emotional intelligence. So I think it's both ways, someone who's communicating it as well as who's receiving it. And so you just have to be careful with your words. So, so that's a good point um because looking at that from a standpoint of because we, i mean let's let's face it we deal with varying types of relationships be it personal professional uh even uh association uh relationships mm -hmm. and oftentimes because of how we've been programmed throughout mm -hmm. life we we associate things like i i, I realized this probably I would say last year sometime when it comes to interacting with people, because, you know, mm -hmm. during during COVID, you have to shift everything, not just job, not just, you know, travel, but you even have to shift. You even had to shift how you deal with people mm -hmm. and it allowed you to learn. It could have, well should have allowed you to learn a lot about yourself, but also a lot afforded you the opportunity to learn a lot about other people. Yeah. And I realize in interacting and dealing with people that a lot of times a, a number of us use yeah. words irresponsibly mm -hmm. be because of how we've been trained and, and, and programmed throughout life. You know, so we say things that are not necessarily associated with one thing, and that's not necessarily the word we should use. But I believe because we don't have the emotional intelligence to be aware um. We will continue down that pathway and then we'll 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 feel wronged by people because we ourselves utilize the wrong wording. Like even in talking to people, uh, I tend to like to repeat things back to people 
so that I am clear on what they're saying. Because sometimes, you know, when people are talking to you, what they're saying is not registering because it's like, uh, uh, do they mean this? Or they're trying to say something else. And so I tend to repeat things back to people. Uh, so so that I'm anytime I say so that I'm clear. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's active listening, active yes. listening, repeating it back. Yeah, that's a good tip. I want to be sure that what I'm because here's the other thing, guys. Oftentimes, what someone says and what we hear, depending on our emotional intelligence, is not the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if I say to you, Hey, um, Leela, uh, get out the kitchen, <laughs> you know, and you heard, Get your ass out the kitchen, <laughs> that ain't the same thing because I didn't say that. You know, yeah. I didn't say that to you, but. It could have been the way uh, something that triggered how someone else had dealt with you early in your life. And that's what you heard. And then you'll say to me, well, you told me to get my ass out of the kitchen. I never yeah. used that word. You know what I'm saying? And so I think oftentimes we are uh, misassociating words with how we feel because we're not really sure about how to translate how we feel into words. And yeah. uh, I think that's a major problem when it comes to how people interact with one another and i learned that a lot but not last year dealing with people and them not associating the proper words with how they feel so they can communicate effectively you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah i mean past experiences is what shapes us to perceive things whether it's the language we use whether it's the tone we use mm -hmm. um and so that has a big part into having emotional intelligence um, and I think it just gives giving people grace, having empathy. Um, that's a big part of emotional intelligence as well. It's not just your emotions, reading yours, reading mine, not just being able to self-regulate, but having the ability to have um, empathy is a big part of it too. So, so, so here's a question. People might say, "Well, you got on the show. Why would you answer that question? You got to. Are you emotionally intelligent? Yes, I am. How, I believe how I do am. you know? Well, people have told me. Outside of that, how do you know? Um, it's because I'm able to, when I'm in it, let's say, like, for example, in a social setting, right? Like, mm -hmm. let's say you're with, like, a group of people, you're at a dinner party, and you know how it goes. You have, like, a clique of people. Let's say they're new. You don't know them, and you start talking. You start, And then there's, like, that one person who comes in, doesn't even, like, wait a little bit, right? It's, it's kind of the self-interest, doesn't even wait to see like what the conversation is about. We could talk about traveling abroad, right? And this actually is a true story. <laughs> Hopefully this girl doesn't watch this. We were talking about traveling <laughs> abroad and she just comes in and she was like, oh, I made this or I did that. And she kind of just made it all about her and had nothing to do with the conversation, right? Mm. And so having enough emotional intelligence, not only was I able to read, and she was a friend of mine, right? Reading like people's reaction to her, and then her lack of awareness of what she just created, this social weird awkwardness, I inserted myself to kind of bridge kind of the situation. So I'm like, oh, Susan, that wasn't her name, but you know. I was like, oh, Susan, thank you so much for telling us. Oh, actually we're talking about, you know, travel and this and that, right? And so I've done that multiple times. I've been able to not only, you know, bridge or fix awkward situations, I've, um, I've done a lot of stuff related to like, triggering conversations related to like anti-racism and sexism and feminism. And so that's a really charged topic, right? Mm -hmm. All of them are. And so you have to be able to have emotional intelligence to read how people are receiving the information and being gracious that if people get defensive or attack you, that you are not going to react with that maybe same energy. And it, it is a level of, um, I don't want to say maturity because there isn't really a correlation between maturity and emotion. I mean, it's a little bit separate, Mm -hmm. But you got to be the bigger person. I think when someone says, okay, I'm going to be the bigger person in this situation, that's demonstrating emotional intelligence. And I've demonstrated that multiple times. Okay. 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 So uh, are you in a relationship currently? No, I'm, I'm okay. single. Um, so, so, so how long ago was your last relationship? I dated someone for six months, about last august till maybe february or so that's like six months march something like that so so would they say you held enough emotional capacity to maneuver through the relationship yes call them up right now phone a friend <laughs> 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 I, I want to hear this. Uh, what you mean you're not talking to him? You're emotionally intelligent. Call him up right oh, now. No, no. Moving forward, moving forward. Maybe I'm going to meet someone here, Finch. Like, what's <laughs> 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 Who are you trying to meet? 
I'm just saying, I'm trying to meet a good person, good heart, someone I find attractive. I can have intelligent conversation, someone who has high emotional intelligence. Like mm -hmm. I went someone the same wavelength. I went someone who has the same journey and aspirations. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like a nutshell. Oh, okay. <laughs> We brought it up, so I might as well put in my little plug. Washington, D.C. Might as well shoot your shot. I mean. <laughs> hey, they can call me snacks for nothing, you know what I'm saying? You never know. Somebody might be like, hey, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, so, so how important would you say your lack of emotion, because you, I'm pretty sure you wasn't always this way, right? Um, you have been this way your entire I think life. It was, and the reason why is because. Um, wait, wait, wait! You saying you've been this way your entire life? Yeah, I think I have been because I was. I grew up as a only child, and I was around adults mm. a lot. And I remember, like, my aunties and people would come to me with their problem, not problems, but they would kind of feel comfortable sharing situations, mm. and I would kind of talk about you know, kind of like counseling in a way, right? And so even at a young age, people always felt comfortable to come to me and seek just like my my initial thoughts on things. So I thought that was very interesting at, at, a, at a young age. And yeah, I've always been a social person. Um, I get along with pretty much everyone. Um, if someone doesn't like me, it's because they don't like someone being direct and they don't like someone who calls it like it is, you know, there are all those people. But for the most part, I'm a, I'm a pretty likable person, so. <laughs> So I want to make sure I'm clear. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying to me, you've always been emotionally intelligent your entire so, life. So let me break down emotional intelligence, right? It's not something that you just kind of develop. It can be something that's biological, right? It could be based off of um, motivation. Um, mm -hmm. It can be based off of um, like your consciousness. It could be based off of um, your cognitive like ability to process information. So it's not like something like, oh, I'm going to grow into being emotionally intelligent. No, everyone has a set point, right? Everyone has a certain level of a set point that they just have, whether it be bio biologically or even as a child, right? Whatever your experiences are. So for example, let's say there, there's an argument to say, if you've had a lot of traumatic situations happen to you, mm -hmm. you might have high emotional intelligence because you're able to empathize with so many different people who might, relate to whatever you experienced, or uh -huh. it could also be, you could have low emotional intelligence because you have had all these traumatic situations. You're so caught up in your own, you know, situation. And maybe if you haven't healed properly and seek the proper attention, then that might be able, that might potentially hold you back as a barrier to self-regulate, you know, kind of normal, constant situations. So yes, emotional intelligence is not just something you can just learn yet. You can grow and put like intentionality to be better, but there is a level of like basic emotional intelligence that people have in general, right? Some people are extroverts, some people are introverts, mm. but you can, if you're an introvert, you can try to be an extrovert by intentionally doing certain steps, right? So it's very similar to that. Okay. I'm probably going to disagree with you on that. Uh, you because I think, I, th I think people, people mature at different rates. And I think when you are, when you are aware of things and then you're able to correct those things without people telling you, uh, oftentimes that's not something that we, even though we might have a set level of emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. I don't think we're, we're fully developed in that. And so that's why we, we find ourselves throughout life, um, maturing and changing like growing and developing and the more we learn things the, the better at things we get is such as handling relationships and uh people in, in our job you know or you know just strangers on the street so um so, real I don't quick, so, so real quick how do you define maturity because like academic wise maturity is a little bit separate than emotional intelligence so how would you define uh maturity then well so so i'll use myself as an example i've been mature uh, beyond my years since I was a kid, meaning I could, I knew things when you talk about intelligence, I knew things that nobody had, I still do know things that no one has taught me. Right. And even at a young age, I had a certain level of wisdom, but I had not yet matured enough to be able to move. Like I remember we used to, uh, my mom was the president of the tennis association and mm. we used to travel to Washington DC every year for her convention. And yeah. I remember being on the bus talking to this uh, woman and I, I had to be about probably nine or 10. And I was talking to this woman who was probably like a junior senior in high school. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was 
intelligent enough to hold a conversation with her. But I wasn't as mature to handle everything that came with that conversation with someone who was uh, beyond me in years and experiences. So so I had to develop into that where at 20, I could have a conversation and understand these emotions or things that, that go around with these relationships. But I, I wouldn't say I was I had that as a young man, you know, so mm-hmm. over time period, I've and even as an adult in my 30s and now in my 40s, learning how to cope with my emotions to be able to operate, um, I would say, efficiently in and throughout relationships, no matter what the tier of the relationship is, because there's a difference in how I handle a, a woman that I am with versus how I handle a friend. You know, uh, I did a show last week with two of two of my uh, closest friends that I've had in my life for quite some time. And one of them, we had a falling out over for, and we hadn't spoke until last week. We hadn't spoke in probably six, seven years, right? It sounds like a juicy episode. I better watch that. Oh yeah, it was good. Uh, it, I think it premieres tomorrow. Uh, um, part one premieres tomorrow and then part two the next day. But, mm-hmm. you know, I was able to admit in that conversation just last week, you know, mm-hmm. after six years of not talking, yeah. Hey, I, I I was not emotionally intelligent enough or mature enough to handle uh, the scenario because it was a minor scenario. I mean, he came to visit. He came to Los Angeles and didn't call me and then posted on social media about somebody mm-hmm. else being his, his best friend or some best boy in L.A. And I was like, yeah. nigga, I live here. You know, <laughs> I've known you for 20 plus 30 years, you know, whatever yeah. the case may be. And so I felt some kind of way about it. Uh, at that time period, but I did not handle that situation maturely. And so that's why I say even even with my vast knowledge of of, of intelligence, I wasn't emotionally intelligent to even recognize um, my emotions at the time or how my actions would affect him. Mm-hmm. And, and then that changed the bridge between our relationship from then to now where we've gone all this time without talking. Like I unfollowed okay. him on social media, all those things. So again, you know, Today, being able to admit that to him last week because we hadn't talked about it, the crazy part is we talked about it for the first time on the show. So, yeah, wow, taking ownership at, at not not one time did I blame him for even for his response or his actions. I didn't blame him. I took full responsibility because I'm only in control of, of my emotions and how I feel and and my choices and how I do things. And so that's why I, I want to make sure we're definitive in when we're talking about this because everybody might have a certain level of of emotional intelligence but they're not mature enough to function uh efficiently yeah. with that you know throughout relationships. So i i that- see it two separate things so i'm glad you broke it down because absolutely i've matured you know I've, I've always been the same person but yes absolutely over the years i've matured i've learned i've had different experiences i've seen you know relationships you know i used to be black and white now i'd see it as gray right so i definitely have matured in my viewpoint and people's perspectives mm. but i guess i see maturity a l- different than like emotional intelligence, which is just basically the ability to read emotions and be able to react to that. So I think maybe we just like got caught up in like semantics, but yeah, totally agree that uh, I have definitely matured a lot in my, you know, I'll be honest, like I used to think I was always right. <laughs> my righteousness of like, I- I'm right, you're wrong. You said used to, huh? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's still there, but at least maybe I'm able to recognize it, right? Give me some points. <laughs> but okay. uh, but no, yeah. And so I think you know, understanding that you know people have different perspectives, different upbringings, different everything. But but at the same time, you know, you you're in control of you wanting to be in a situation or not. Right. You're you have the ability to recognize someone's pain, someone's past, someone's baggage, whatever you want to call it. And you can decide to step in with that person, and help them with that situation. Or you could say, you know what? This isn't really for me in this point in my life and, you know, move forward. So. But, so, yeah. But don't so you I have to be it. mature to be able to do that, though, you think? Like, yeah. You, as far as, yes. Yeah. I mean, because I'm I think if you. Agree. Yeah, if you're immature, you can't recognize and be. You don't even see the fact that somebody is uh, is affected by something that you said and did, nor have the ability to take responsibility for that, mm-hmm. so that you can uh, self regulate and, and correct that issue. So I think you have to have a certain level of of maturity and growth in yeah. that particular area just to be able to recognize that because 
e- even with the definition of what emotional intelligence is, if you're not mature in that area of your life, you're still not going to have it. All right, Leela. So if people want to connect with you online, how can they do so? Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm Leela Talks Lifestyle. On YouTube, you can see me at Leela Talks. And I have a TikTok called Leela Talk, but I'm I'm going to be honest. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, one of my friends is going to help me out with that. And then I have an awesome clubhouse uh, club called Leela Talks. And we discuss all sorts of things similar to YouTube, but we really kind of have a really inclusive panel whether it's Mm. activism, whether it's travel, whether it's mindset, like fix versus growth versus emotional intelligence, again, mind, body, soul. Mm. And I intentionally create spaces where there are going to be differing opinions, but we're going to respect each other, right? It's going to be a a safe, inclusive space for people to share, have a healthy, Mm -hmm. you know, dialogue. And yeah, so you can find me on all those different platforms. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good.